Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Bible class. If you were with us last week, we watched Mo and the Big Exit, which is a veggie tale that tells the story of Mo and the mayor and how God helped Mo convince the mayor to let God's people go. Well, that was a veggie tale version and it was fun. But today we're going to hear the Bible story that tells what really happened and how God showed his power to Pharaoh through the plagues. And plagues are things that are sent. And um, so things were sent like insects and diseases and storms and, and you'll see. So, um, so God was showing his power to convince the Pharaoh that he needed to let God's people out of Egypt. So here's the story. God told Moses and Aaron to go down to the river Nile where Pharaoh went in the morning. They had a message from God to give to Pharaoh. Let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness, God said. Pharaoh refused. So Aaron did what God had instructed and struck the river Nile with his staff. The water was changed to blood. Fish died. The Egyptians could not drink the water and the river smelt bad. Pharaoh's magicians did the same thing by their secret arts. Pharaoh refused to obey God and turned and went back to the palace. Seven days later, God told Moses to tell Aaron to stretch his staff over the streams, canals, and ponds to make frogs come out onto the land. Pharaoh's magicians used their secret arts and were able to do the same. Frogs were everywhere, and Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron. Pray to your God to take the frogs away from my people, and I will let your people go, promised Pharaoh. Moses replied, so you will know there is no one like God. The frogs will leave you and your houses tomorrow. Moses prayed to God, and he answered, frogs died in the houses, courtyards, and fields. The dead frogs were piled into heaps, and the smell was really bad. Pharaoh, however, broke his promise and refused to let the Hebrews go and worship God in the wilderness. So God told Moses to tell Aaron to strike the dust with his staff, and the dust would become gnats. Pharaoh's magicians tried but could not do this. This is the finger of God, they told Pharaoh. Gnats were on people and animals everywhere. Pharaoh still had a hard heart and refused to let the Hebrews go and worship God. Early in the morning, as Pharaoh went down to the river, Moses and Aaron told him what God had planned next. Swarms of flies would buzz around the Egyptians, but not the Hebrew slaves living in Goshen. Dense swarms of flies came into the palace and the houses of the Egyptians. But the flies stayed away from the Hebrew slaves. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron. I will let you go and offer sacrifices to your God, but you must not go far. Now pray to God to stop the flies. Moses prayed, and the next day the flies left. But Pharaoh broke his promise and refused to let the Hebrew slaves go. Moses went to Pharaoh again. If you refuse to let my people go, tomorrow God will bring a terrible plague on your horses, donkeys, camels, cattle, sheep, and goats, but livestock of the slaves will be spared. The next day, the livestock of the Egyptians died. Pharaoh investigated and found out that the animals belonging to the Hebrew slaves were alive and well, but he refused to let God's people go and worship him in the wilderness. Moses took soot from a furnace and threw it into the air in front of Pharaoh. God says this soot will become a fine dust and people and animals will get festering boils. Pharaoh's magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils that broke out on them and the Egyptians. But Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh that he was going to show his power by sending the worst hailstorm Egypt had ever had. Anyone not sheltering inside would be risking their life. The officials of Pharaoh who feared God brought their families and animals indoors. 
But those who ignored God stayed outside. When Moses raised his staff, the worst storm anyone had ever seen blew up. Lightning filled the skies and large hailstones came pounding down. Those caught outside were killed, but the storm did not hit the slaves living in Goshen. I have sinned. The Lord is right, Pharaoh told Moses. I will let you go. Moses went out of the city and spread out his hands to God. The thunder and lightning and hail stopped. Pharaoh, however, then changed his mind and stubbornly refused to let God's people go. He thought he could defy God, but God was not finished with him yet. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, whoa, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 said Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Whoa, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the burning bush told me to come on down. Take your shoes off your unholy ground. Got to get my people out of Pharaoh's hand and lead them into the promised land. I said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, whoa, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 I said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Whoa, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, me and my people go into the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army coming after me. I raised my rod, stuck it in the sand. And all of God's people walked across on dry land. I said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Whoa, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 I said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Whoa, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Pharaoh's army was a-coming too. So what do you think that I could do? I raised my rod and I cleared my throat. And all Pharaoh's army did the dead man's float. I said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Whoa, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 said Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Whoa, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, then Ezekiel, and then Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. God had already sent seven plagues on the Egyptians. Moses had another warning for Pharaoh. If you refuse to let God's people go, he will bring a plague of locusts upon the land, something your parents and ancestors have never seen. Pharaoh's officials advised him to let God's people go. But when Pharaoh found out that all the Hebrew slaves would be leaving, he only gave permission for the men to go and worship God. Then he ordered Moses and Aaron to get out of his presence. So Moses raised his staff over Egypt. An east wind blew all night, bringing in a swarm of locusts. They covered the ground, making it look black, and ate everything growing in the fields until nothing green remained on plant or tree. I have sinned against God, Pharaoh told Moses. Forgive me once more and pray to God to take this deadly plague away. When Moses left Pharaoh and prayed, the wind changed direction and blew from the west carrying the locusts into the Red Sea. Pharaoh became stubborn again, broke his promise, and refused to let God's people go and worship him. Moses stretched out his hands, and total darkness came over the land for three days. Only in Goshen, where the Hebrew slaves lived, was their light. The Egyptians could not see anyone else or move about. Pharaoh summoned Moses. 
Go and worship God. Take your women and children as well, but you must leave your animals behind. Our animals must travel with us, insisted Moses. Some are needed to offer sacrifices to God. Get out of my sight, ordered Pharaoh. Don't ever appear before me again. If you do, you will die. Just as you say, replied Moses, I won't appear before you again, but God has one more plague to send. About midnight, the firstborn son of every family and animal will die, and there will be weeping and wailing everywhere except among God's people. Moses was red with anger. Then your officials will come and bow before me and tell us to leave. After that, I shall leave. Moses then turned and walked out of the palace. The Lord then told Moses to tell his people that on the 10th day of the month, every man who was head of a family was to sacrifice a lamb. Those who could not afford a lamb should join with a family that had one. The lambs must be one-year-old males without defect. God's people obeyed, and each family sacrificed a lamb. God then told them to put some of the blood of the slain lamb into a basin. Then, using a bunch of hyssop dipped in the blood, they should smear the top and sides of the doorframe of the house where they were going to eat the meat. God explained that that night he was going to pass through the land to bring judgment. But if he saw blood on the doorposts of a house, he would pass over, and those inside would be spared. So the Hebrews did as God instructed. That evening, God's people got dressed, ready to leave Egypt, and sat down for a meal they would later call the Passover, for God would pass over them. Moses explained that the Passover meal was to be celebrated every year, and when children asked what it meant, they were to explain its meaning and tell how God had spared those homes covered by the blood of the Lamb and set his people free. At midnight, the Lord passed over the land, and the firstborn son of Pharaoh and every Egyptian family was found dead. The firstborn of every animal was slain, too. There was weeping and wailing in every house except those houses with blood on the doorposts. That night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people and go and worship the Lord God. Take your families and animals with you. Please bless me. God's people packed their belongings. The Egyptians, afraid that they all might die, gave them gifts of silver and gold. Hurry and leave, they urged. God's people rushed off so quickly, they did not have time to add yeast to the dough they had made for bread. They had been slaves for 430 years, and now they were free, just as God had promised. That was amazing. So if you want to do some activities, there are some activities listed down below in the description. And for right now, let's just pray and thank God. Dear God, please help us to always remember that you are the powerful God who made the world and everything in it. Help us remember that you loved us enough to send your son to be our Passover lamb to save us from slavery to sin. Thank you so much for your love and for your mercy and help us to be your hands and feet here on earth. In your son's holy and precious name, amen. Thank you, and I hope you have a great week.